What's going on guys, Powder Man CPC back here. So today we're gonna to be working on some trick flow valve covers and uh, intake manifold and a couple other miscellaneous parts for a Fox body Mustang that's getting restored. It's gonna be pretty cool. Um, they're actually gonna to be two-tone. They're gonna to be a base coat of matte black and top coat of uh, gloss white. So get ready, kind of hang on here. Let's go and uh, you can kind of go through the process with me. First step is gonna be masking up everything. I've already taken care of getting them stripped and uh, sandblasted and everything so next step is going to be to go ahead and get everything taped up so we don't get that powder in those areas where uh where we don't want it you know so let's go ahead and uh see how it goes stay tuned <laughs> Sometimes they just have that residue look to them, but they're actually clean. Um, we're gonna go through things like these spines. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up before uh, they go in the oven. Like this hole here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up before it goes in the oven. So we just mess it off like this. And also, I'm gonna plug that up. And you know what's crazy? I actually should have did that before. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. Let's see if we got a plug big enough. If not, I might just have to open it up and then uh, let's go ahead. Plug it from the inside. Anyway, let's get it. We're gonna go ahead and get it hung up and then uh, fill in the holes, put a couple of these that we need to do. Let's get the spring.
so we got a parts will cure on our parts and uh, the ones that you see in the front up here these are all gonna they're just gonna be white so that's why we're doing them alone uh, and we're actually gonna bake them separately uh, also the intake manifold is gonna be baked separately and the reason being is because the thickness of the metal they're gonna heat up at different different uh, temperatures or diff at different rates of time or whatever so we don't want to just go off one part basically we're just gonna do everything kind of individually so we know that they get their proper cure and I'm not sure if you can see those all that well but but it's just like a flat black a matte black and uh, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and plug the holes back up on where we need to and then we're gonna spray our whites and then we're gonna do our two-tone effect so how that's gonna go is basically we're gonna spray the whole part white now and then we're gonna take a wet rag um, I use a wet rag a dry rag and my finger and basically take it and once you spray the whole thing you're gonna go ahead and kind of just dampen your finger and then you're gonna wipe that off a little bit at a time you have to do a little bit at a time you can't just try to do the whole thing you have to do just a little bit at a time and uh, once you get it you know inspect it really good and then we're just gonna go ahead and put it back in the oven for that final cure and this takes a little bit more time so there's nothing that you really want to rush so you always want to dedicate a little bit more time for something like that but uh, these won't be too hard a lot simpler than other projects we've done in the past so let's go ahead and get those we're gonna do these small ones first and I'm gonna take them and go ahead and throw them in so they can bake and uh, they'll get out of the way and then we'll go ahead and start on our big boys the three so let's get to it So what we're going to use for this one, we're going to do our white. The process first, we're going to spray it. Uh, the both parts, we're going to spray them entirely. And then this is actually like an old shirt, but uh, it's like basically almost like a lint-free type shirt. You want to do something with really low lint or no lint at all for whatever you use. And uh, basically go ahead and I just kind of dampen one side of it. And the process is going to be after it's all sprayed, what I'm going to have to do is basically go and depending on where I'm at, it's depending on what finger I use. But uh, what I do is just kind of dampen my finger, wipe the part, wipe just a little bit. You only want to wipe maybe about an inch or so at a time, inch or two at a time to keep it from uh, falling off onto another part. The thing about powder, once you push it off of one spot, it's already magnetized to it. It's going to try to jump in somewhere else. So you don't want it to get back on the part. Anyway, uh, use a dampen cloth or rag, whatever. And then uh, you're gonna go through and just do a little bit at a time, wipe it off, take it, and then I actually use a dry rag to wipe my finger on before putting it back on the damp rag to wipe it in. And it's just like a revolving process until you get it all done. So uh, I'll actually probably do one, and then once that one's done, I'll take that one and move it aside. That way 
Uh, we don't have to worry about maybe something happening with some of the, uh, you know, say this one's done, I go to do work on this one. We don't want some of the powder off of it jumping back on this one and then we're just chasing ourselves. So uh, basically, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple once you see it. Uh, it does take a little bit of work to get used to doing something like this, but it's, it's not, you know, I don't even want to say rocket science because once you learn how to do it, you know how to do it, you know? I mean, just do it and do it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, it is, it takes a little bit longer. Like I said, it, it is time involved uh, versus just spraying these. I just had to spray them and then, you know, put them in, let them bake. Uh, it's a little bit different. So, I mean, obviously I would say charge accordingly, but each job is different. So, either way. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to use a damp cloth, wipe, then we'll go to our dry cloth. Then return back to the damp cloth, just damp your finger a little bit, wipe, same. So let's go ahead and get these sprayed, and then uh, we'll get started on them. Because we actually have the small parts in the oven already uh, that are white. They're going through, and they're just going to go through their full pier right now. And then uh, hopefully should be done wiping these by the time or almost you know around the time they come out. That way we can go ahead and put these in the car to get these in, and then we'll start on the, uh, the intake manifold. So let's go ahead. Got it.
so I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see. I'm gonna bring it in here. You can see the result after. There's your tone. So what you wanna do after that, so this is kinda like a before and then an after. And they'll both look the same. But so what you wanna do after that is you wanna go ahead and either put it somewhere where the wind's not gonna blow it or you know nobody's gonna bump it or anything like that or we wanna uh, go ahead and put it in the oven. My recommendation on a lot of two-tone stuff, sometimes the wheel is a little bit different, but uh, with things like this, you, you wanna carry it and put it in the oven on a rack or go ahead and put your uh, put your, you know, your roll-in racks in, if, if at all possible, go ahead and put those in the oven first and then carry the part and put it inside the oven. That way you don't have to worry about it bouncing around and little parts or, uh, you know, little pieces of uh, powder getting stuck on the black because, you know, white and black, they contrast really hard. So you'll kind of be able to notice and you'll never be able to get exactly perfect, but we want to get as close perfect as we can, right? So if somebody's paying for it, you want to give them the best job that, they, that you can uh, possibly give. So that's the uh that's the goal so i still have these in the oven right now i'm waiting on them to finish curing they probably got i just checked them a few minutes ago and they probably got about another three or four minutes before they're coming out and then uh we're gonna go ahead and uh put the other one in so i'm gonna go ahead and start working on this one well i'm gonna get this one out of the way and then we're gonna go ahead and start working on the second one uh meanwhile i'll go ahead and take the other parts out of the oven during that time Alright guys, so there we are. That's the second piece looking good. Here I'll give you a close-up of it. Let's see. So this is the second part. So I go so give you a nice look. Nice 3D look actually. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our other parts out of the oven and uh, throw these in and let them bake. And then we'll uh, get the results. So matter of fact, look, while these are gonna be in the oven, we're gonna be working on our other set, on our uh, manifold. So let's go ahead and get these in the oven and uh, see what we can come up with. So we gotta plug up the holes. We're gonna plug these holes up down here first. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and spray the whole thing white. And then we'll get started on baking. Um, one reason I will say, and this is just a quick tip. This is something that I do. I mean, you don't have to, but it's something that I do. 
So whenever I spray anything, and that's wheels, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, I usually spray from the back first, and then the front, which is the part that's going to be presented the most. You kind of want to spray that one last. Um, it's not hard to explain, but it's hard for me to say because I can't find the words. But basically, what it is is whenever uh, you know, just in case there's some type of something happens where there's some type of like overspray or anything like that, which it shouldn't be any overspray if you're you know you're spraying cold and it's not spraying hot. But you won't have to worry about any inconsistencies. So like everything will look consistent if you spray from the back it's gonna you're still gonna get like a wraparound effect from uh, your powder coating but just say you spray from this side first it wraps around when you spray that side some more wraps back around if anything happens where uh, and even though it's a really small chance but if something happens where um, just say there was too much here you won't see that in your finish once this thing is actually mounted on the car or something like that, you won't see anything like that. Um, so it's like a rare chance that that'll happen, but you know, just in case, always spray from the back first, no matter what it is, and then spray from the front. Um, and then that's usually how it goes. The only, and I would say like the only real reason that you wouldn't do something like that would be if you were spraying something that has a lot of uh, Faraday areas, which Faraday areas is, is if it are, <laughs> Faraday areas are, um, areas that have like a real deep recess and it's kind of hard to get into those areas since powder coating is kind of like an electrolysis type of thing uh, if, whenever we're spraying a part you're charging the part with uh, with the charge so when the part gets too much of a charge it's going to tend to throw the powder back out it doesn't want it to get into those tight little areas so you kind of want to spray those areas first before the part gets too charged and tends to start kicking that powder back out. So that would be the only reason why you might want to spray something from the front first if it has like those deep areas. But then again, you only want to spray those areas and then you can go ahead and go to the back and then spray from there and then do like you normally do. But we don't have to worry about it. We'll catch another video. So uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I will show you that in a different video. I already have a plan for that one too. So uh, be on the lookout for it. But we're gonna go ahead and spray and close these holes. And then we're going to go ahead and spray this one, and then we're going to start wiping it. So, let's get to it.
Make time for these also is 400 degrees PMT for 10 minutes, which is once the park gets to 400 degrees, 10 minutes uh, <laughs> is how long the park needs to get 400 degrees before it's considered fully cured. Uh, I tend to leave it in a little bit longer if they have over baked stability, but uh, you know, just to make sure you don't want any problems later, but they're ready to go. So let's go ahead and see what these guys look like. It's dark now, it's crazy. I actually had to leave for a few minutes to go pick up something from a local tire shop. But well, we're still gonna finish these guys tonight. So let's go ahead and get back over here to this guy. Get it wiped down and in there so we can final cure it. This is the last piece of our project, so Go ahead and knock it out. Go back in that oven. Should have probably contrast with it. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it back in and see what we come out with. Right, guys so in the interest of saving time I went ahead and got everything finished taken down demasked and laid out so we can take a look at it um, not necessarily the best lighting but everything looks great so let's go ahead and check it out all right so here we go finished product trip flow it just really gives it really good contrast when you have like a gloss and a matte color together these are just a couple of little miscellaneous parts that went with it. Let me put these together. And you can't really capture it on this camera, but in person it looks a lot, lot better. The color's a lot brighter also. Just don't have the best light in here right now, but kind of get the, get the point. It's actually a lot smoother in person too. But as long as the customer's happy, that's all I worry about. So you can see it. Anyway. <laughs> that thing always kicks in at the wrong time. But anyway, 
I really thank you guys for uh, watching my video. And I really want to just keep making more of these just so, you know, everyone can kind of see how their projects are going and uh, what the process is versus me just telling you, you know, beforehand or after and all that stuff. So um, go ahead and like, subscribe if you would. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, stay tuned to the next video. Powder Man CPC.